All right, good evening, everybody. Uh, glad to have you on, on our fifth and final session of the day for the pediatric roundtable discussion with the Lurie Children's Division of Gastroenterology, Hepatology, and Nutrition. My name is Chad Worley, the physician liaison for the north side of the city, north and northwest suburbs. And I am joined by our host, Dr. Barry Werschel, the division head for gastroenterology, hepatology, and nutrition. And he will be here to introduce our team uh, from Thrive GI, the integrative health uh, program, Dr. Josh, Joshua Prozlak and Dr. Lauren Potoff. And uh, before I turn it over to Dr. Werschel, I would just like to remind you all that we have handouts to download and uh, questions are definitely encouraged in the question box that we will answer after the presentation. And um, you will receive an email with the recordings uh, link for this session and all the other sessions. And I also ask uh, you fill out the survey that will come with that, with that link. That survey will help us provide you uh, with better roundtables moving forward trying to ask you what you would like to see coming up this fall. So, but uh, that's enough of uh, me talking. You guys are here to hear Dr. Werschel and our Thrive GI team. So Dr. Werschel, take it away, please. Great, thank you, Chad. So um, um, I apologize to those who have been attending um, multiple of these sessions because you've heard this introduction um, maybe too many times, but I'm Dr. Barry Werschel, I'm the head of the um, gastroenterology, hepatology, and nutrition program here at Lori Children's. I have trained at Washington University, both for medical school and my residency, and then did my fellowship in the combined program in pediatric GI at Harvard, um, where I kind of started my career out as a basic scientist studying mucosal immunology and how the immune system functions within the gut, um, and have had the privilege of leading the GI program here at Lori for the last 13 and a half years, over which time we've been able to build up a cadre of, of providers and specialists that really touch all of the realms of, of pediatric GI, hepatology and nutrition um, that encompasses this subspecialty. Um, the result of this, the building of these programs has been that we've been consistently ranked as one of the top um, pediatric GI programs in the country, um, and certainly the number one program in the state of Illinois. At the present time, we have 23 physicians um, that work within the division, 11 um, nurse practitioners or advanced practice nurses who also provide care for our patients. We see patients at 12 different sites throughout the Chicagoland area, with the most recent new sites being added of Skokie and, and Glenview. Um, we run our advanced endoscopy program out of the main hospital. However, we do um, a very, um, have a very busy endoscopy program at Central DuPage, Northbrook, and Westchester um, to provide these services in a more convenient locale for, for your patients and our, our, your referrals. Um, we started this morning with a talk by John Fortunato on um, abdominal pain and IBS. And I think it's really um, appropriate that we're ending the session today with a discussion of a, of, a, of a new program within the GI division and also a more um, comprehensive way of, of approaching patients that have um, both not just functional GI problems, but also have chronic. Um, GI problems and that group of patients that are looking for um, additional ways to deal with the burden of chronic illness. So to do that, we took advantage of um, one of our uh, faculty members who showed an interest in this, and that was Josh Prozelik. Um, Josh did his uh, his MD training at Ohio State and then became a long-term um, Chicagoite um, and did his residency here at Lori Children's, his fellowship um, at, uh, at Lori. 
And then several years ago, came into my office and said, you know, Barry, I'm really interested in um, this kind of integrative medicine approach. And I said, this is wonderful. This is exactly the kinds of things that we need for our patients. Um, but how are you going to do this? And Josh really took the bull by the horns um, and entered into a fellowship in integrative medicine that was run out of the Andrew Wild Center in, um, in Arizona. Um, and became certified uh, in integrative medicine. Um, and about the same time, we were very fortunate to have um, Lauren Potoff, um, a pediatric psychologist, join our division, primarily focused on dealing with the, 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 the issues around our patient population with inflammatory bowel disease. But it dovetailed so very nicely with what Josh was doing in creating this um, at this integrative um, health program. Lauren did her PhD here at Northwestern and then did an internship and fellowship at, at Boston Children's. So the stars all aligned um, properly for this to happen. And it's been a tremendous um, asset to, um, to the division and to the care that we deliver to um, this complex patient population. So with that, I'm gonna turn over the um, podium to, um, to Dr. Prozelik. Um, and Dr. Pothoff, and they'll tell you about the Thrive GI program. All right, good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining in. And yes, the stars did align and connect me and Lauren, and we are very excited to be here to talk about our integrative health program called Thrive GI. So as we start today, I think it's important to understand a few basic terms. Um, in regards to integrative health. So the National Center for Complementary and Integrative Health defines complementary therapies as non-mainstream practices that are used together with conventional medicine, whereas alternative therapies are those non-mainstream practices used in place of conventional medicine. Now many use these terms interchangeably, but for our practice, everything that we talk about this evening will be um, termed complementary. This table shows various complementary therapies that we do talk about in our program. And we'll talk a little bit more in detail about hypnotherapy, guided imagery, meditation, yoga, and uh, just a handful of supplements. So as we talk about complementary therapies, we have to think about why patients may seek them. And there are basically two categories of reasons. Um, one category are push reasons, those things that push people into thinking about these modalities. And that can range from failure of conventional therapies to yield cures, adverse effects of different procedures and medications, um, the short amount of time that conventional practitioners spend with families, and what also results from, um, from that is a fragmentation of care by one or multiple subspecialists. I think in pediatrics, it's important to consider school absenteeism as a push factor as well. There's also those pool reasons, um, and this can include the media reports of dramatic results of different therapies, which may or may not be true. A belief that CAM treatments are more natural and thus more safe, which may also not always be true. Um, CAM therapies also lead to this development of patient empowerment in seeking them. Um, and there is a focus on the, the full individual from both a spiritual and emotional well being sense as well. And as you'll find out later, um, one of the the great things about integrative medicine and, and some of these complementary therapies are that the therapists and providers do spend a lot more time with patients and really get to know them. That brings us to the definition of integrative medicine or integrative health. Um, and that really is bringing together conventional and complementary approaches of care in a coordinated and importantly, evidence-based based way. The approach is often holistic, as I mentioned, where we treat the whole person, and we do emphasize relationship-centered care. So uh, the, the use of complementary therapy or complementary medicine is pretty prevalent. The National Health Interview Survey conducted by the CDC and the NIH 
reports that about a third of adults have used a complementary therapy and over 12% of children have. This use does tend to be higher in adolescents than in younger children. And in our pediatric patients with chronic illnesses, that use can increase to greater than 50%. This graph here that comes from the surveys in 2012 and 2017 from the NHIS depicts the rising use of various modalities, including yoga and meditation. I think in thinking about this rising use of all kinds of therapies, it's important for us as providers to ask our patients about this use and to really know about them as well. So what about in pediatric gastroenterology? Well, functional pain disorders in children affects up to 25% of them worldwide, and more than half of new pediatric GI patients meet Rome criteria for one or more functional GI disorders. Um, in, in a few different survey studies, CAM use is shown to be very high, ranging from 40 to 80 percent of, of folks seen in PHGI practices, and that use is higher in those with functional GI disorders, part and parcel because available and effective pharmacologic interventions for pain disorders and functional disorders are limited. I think integrative medicine is a great model um, for therapy for our pediatric GI patients, um, really because our understanding for abdominal pain and functional GI disorders is based on a biopsychosocial model. So certainly in all of our patients, there may be a genetic predisposition to developing a pain disorder, and that may be partly due to the microbiota. There are sensitizing medical factors that include dysbiosis that could be related to early use of antibiotics, inflammatory disorders, and motility disorders. And there's also sensitizing psychosocial events, which include family stress, anxiety, and depression. And these all can work together, leading to central hypervigilance and sensitization, as well as visceral hypersensitivity. And it's thought that all of these work in concert to lead to the pain that individuals experience in functional abdominal pain disorders. I'll turn the mic over to Lauren now um, to give an overview of some of our complementary therapies that we use. Yeah, so our first complementary therapy that we often recommend is hypnotherapy. And when we explain what hypnotherapy is, it's also very important for us to explain what hypnotherapy is not. So hypnotherapy is not um, making someone fall asleep or swinging a clock in front or a watch in front of their face or making them quack like a duck. Instead, it's absorbing a child, helping a child absorb an imaginative experience with the goal of helping kids develop skills to regulate and control their emotions, behavior, and their mind-body reactions, which is what we're mostly concerned about in, in our Thrive GI Clinic, and be confident in their capacities. So it's defined as um, from the um, Institute using trance on purpose to help you pay attention to things you want to pay attention to, not pay attention to things you don't want to pay attention to, and help you be a better boss of your brain and body, which is what we would all really like to be able to do, right? Um, and we found that pain and IBS um, with treatment of hypnotherapy have long lasting benefits in reducing those symptoms. Moving on to guided imagery. So guided imagery is a widely used mind-body therapy to facilitate improved health outcomes. It's a state of engagement in relaxation and imagery, and the therapist uses verbal guidance to assist the patient in experiencing detailed, vivid imagery using all five senses. It's been shown to have beneficial effects on behavior, cognitions, emotions, and physiology. One of the, a very popular example to use guided imagery is to imagine you're holding a juicy lemon in your hand and the clinician might walk you through what it smells like or what it feels like or even if you were to take a bite what that tastes like and this 
particular mind-body therapy has been shown to improve symptoms of abdominal pain um, in conjunction with receiving standard medical treatment. Cognitive Behavioral Therapy, or CBT, which is um, one of my <laughs> bread and butter practices, is one of the most common and rigorously studied psychotherapy modalities. So advances in CBT have been made on the basis of both research and clinical practice. And so we know that it's really effective in treating anxiety and depression among children and adolescents. The basic principle is what we think how we feel and how we behave are all closely connected and that these factors influence our well-being. So because it's so effective in treating anxiety and depression, it's often used for children and adolescents who have chronic GI conditions because we know that those youth are more vulnerable to also developing anxiety and depression. And so CBT can be modified to incorporate a health narrative in order to help these um, patients cope with their chronic conditions. Mindfulness is something that you may have heard of at one point or another, and it's an awareness that arises through paying attention on purpose in the present moment, non-judgmentally. I like to share with my patients that it's a brief check-in with yourself, and it's a way to manage stress and improve well-being. There are tons of ways to access mindfulness practices. Um, and there are available um, in mindfulness-based stress reduction treatment that off are offered in eight-week courses. There are mobile apps that help you learn how to practice mindfulness. It's being taught in schools, especially with COVID. It's been taught virtually a lot this past year and a half. And there are many websites that are dedicated to mindfulness as well. And when we think of mindfulness in conjunction with patients with chronic GI conditions, we've seen um, studies demonstrating significant improvement in IBS symptom severity and quality of life amongst patients. And yoga. Now, I know that this is something that everyone has heard of. It's widely practiced, and it's a mind-body exercise that's used to reduce stress and anxiety, especially in patients with chronic conditions. It's popular among chronically um, ill populations because it's simple and can be easily applied at home. And it's a really effective way to connect the mind and body through breath. And so this is um, really effective in reducing pain-related um, functional gastrointestinal disorder symptoms among youth. In our program, we also talk a good deal about supplements. And some of these supplements here are pretty common ones that many of you have heard about before. Um, peppermint oil has been shown in studies to help individuals, pediatric patients, with pain associated with IBS. STW5, or the brand name Iberogas, is a tincture of nine different herbs that was created in Germany in the 1950s. Um, and it's been very widely used and has been shown to be helpful in dyspepsia symptoms and also nausea. Ginger is a supplement that can be taken in capsule form or in um, candy form or even teas that can help with nausea. And melatonin, um, commonly used to help with sleep, um, which poor sleep habits we see very frequently in our patients and it probably does play a big role in chronic pain. Um, it can also be used to sometimes augment the use of PPIs in their effectiveness for reflux and acid irritation. So what about integrative medicine at Lurie Children's? Well, um, our program stemmed from a deep dive look into uh, different centers across the country that have integrative health programs. Um, and there aren't very many of them. And in fewer still are those who have dedicated GI programs. Um, and those centers include Children's Hospital of Philadelphia and Stanford, and now Lurie Children's. Um, we've developed this program called Thrive GI Integrative Health Program. Um, and uh, my Lauren and I see all of the patients in this program. We have two sessions each month. Um, for new visits, I spend 90 minutes with all of the patients, and then on return visits, I spend 60 minutes with them. 
and Lauren spends at least 30 minutes with all of the patients, both new and returns. Um, our program is open to referrals for all patients, all pediatric patients with GI conditions. I mean, we spend that 90-minute new visit discussing all aspects of health, including GI illnesses and symptoms, medications, supplements, diet, sleep, um, activity levels, social life and experience, stress, historical use of complementary therapies, psychiatric history, and all of this is done in a framework of considering the goals of the patient and family, which we want them to describe right from the beginning. In Thrive, we collaborate with the patient and family in creating an integrative care plan that works to supplement their existing treatment. So our goal is when we meet with a new patient and family is for them to leave with concrete recommendations that perhaps they've never tried before, their new recommendations, or offering recommendations maybe they've tried a while ago and offering maybe a different spin on them or a different approach. And so recommendations may include mind-body therapies, which are you know, hypnotherapy, cognitive behavioral therapy, guided imagery. And it's really nice too, because some of those mind-body therapies, I'm able to easily kind of give psychoeducation about during the session and provide materials, whereas the other ones like hypnotherapy and cognitive behavioral therapy do require referrals, but we are still able to have patients leave clinic with some concrete recommendations and things that they can start practicing that day. We also provide recommendations around nutrition, a lot of sleep recommendations and sleep hygiene, recommendations for physical activity, ways to reduce stress, promote relaxation, supplements and botanicals and acupuncture as well. And the integrative care plan may include any combination of those recommendations. We may pull, you know, lean more heavily on a certain area based on the family's preference and experience or their presenting problem. Um, we have structured the clinic to accommodate these discussions and like Josh said, making sure that we are able to spend this time in making, in collaborating with the family and having this plan that supplements the care that they're already receiving. We really emphasize um, hearing and understanding the patient and the family's goal, and we really incorporate that into the integrative care plan as well. So in regards to referrals to our program, um, we see all children and adolescents with any um, type of GI issue. Um, this clinic may be especially helpful for families who are interested in an integrative approach to care um, and may be talking to you as primary care providers about this already. Um, we're happy to see patients at any time in their healthcare journey um, with new GI symptoms or a diagnosed GI problem that they would just like some additional information or thinking about. Um, any referral can be made through the EPIC referral process to GI. Um, we just encourage you to, to, in that referral, put in Integrative or Thrive GI so that it's earmarked for us, or families can also request a referral to our program through KidsDoc. Um, prior to scheduling, we would like all families to complete an intake form that our coordinator will send to them. So in summary, use of complementary therapies by our pediatric patients is quite common and integrating standard medical care with mind-body therapies, psychological therapies, and supplements can help children with any GI disorder, but specifically functional abdominal pain. Um, we're excited about our new program, Thrive GI, and we welcome any and all questions and referrals to the program. Um, we're also happy to talk offline through um, Rapid Connect or via email, um, and you can see that listed there at the bottom of the slide. Well, that was an excellent presentation, you guys. Thank it you. was uh, learned learned a lot about um, the integrated part of the uh, of the GI department. So I, I'm sure it was very uplifting for many of our attendees. So I really appreciate your feedback. Um, to all of our attendees, uh, we're taking questions now in the chat room. Right now, we don't have anything, but um, feel free to either raise your hand or type something up. 
Um, in the meantime, Dr. Werschel, do you have anything you'd like to add from the presentation? You know, I think that this really kind of comes full circle for the day and talking about some very common um, problems that we see and uh, that practicing pediatricians see, refer to the GI division. And I hope that it gives some insight into the multiple kinds of ways that we can approach um, some of these very complex um, and um, uh, multi-etiology types of problems that uh, children's and family can have. Okay, great. Well, I, there's no more, there's no questions out there. So this will con conclude our program for the day. Uh, this has been a wonderful program um, on many topics. And as I mentioned throughout the day, um, all, their, all five of our sessions have been recorded. We will have links um, on the Physician Services YouTube page for you to view. In addition to just these, not only we will have these uh, links for these recordings, but the links to the recordings for all of our roundtables we've had since September will be available for you to use. And uh, we are going to be taking a break from roundtables until next September as we give you time to prepare for all of the physicals and exams and all that great stuff you'll be doing for prep, prepping the kids for the fall. Um, Dr. Werschel, any closing remarks? Nope, I think that um, I, I hope it's been uh, a, a useful uh, experience and, um, and please feel free to contact myself or any of my, um, my faculty um, with questions or issues that uh, even when you're not sure whether to refer a patient, we love to have those conversations um, and hopefully able to direct them to the right physicians who care for those particular problems. Okay, and thank you very much. Josh and Lauren, thank you. This was a great presentation. Everybody have a great evening.